morning and welcome back to my channel. Welcome in to episode four of my series, The Rough Draft Vlogs, where we document the process of working on my adult romanticy novel, the first book that I have written in years. If you're new here to give you the Spark Notes version, uh, my book is a adult romanticy. It's a journey book. It follows a group of characters that travel to the wall in order to basically escape the dystopian society that they're living in. There's magic and conflicting loyalties and of course romance and it's a fun time. There is a lawnmower outside though. That's gonna be annoying. So it is currently February, which means that we have a fresh 10K goal to accomplish this month. If you guys saw my 2024 writing goals planning video, my goal for the first three months of the year is to hit 10,000 words per month. In January, we did achieve this and we passed 50,000 words for the manuscript. So in February, we're hoping to pass 60K words. All of this is to put us on track to finish the manuscript with Camp Nano April, which I feel like totally doable considering where we're at in the book. But yeah, this vlog is kickstarting February and hopefully making some intense progress towards our 10k word goal. I want to show you guys the new tracking system that I've been using that has really been helping me stay motivated with these word count goals. One moment. <laughs> Okay, so I've seen several authors on YouTube do this sort of circles tracker method. So this is my February one. As you can see, there's one circle for every 1000 words. And then I also have my starting word count and goal word count written across the top for the month. I've already filled in one circle because we've written 1000 words so far this month. I feel like this is going to be so nice. It's such a fun, tangible way to celebrate my progress every 1000 words. And 1000 words feels like such a bite sized doable chunk. So I feel like I'll really be motivated to want to fill in a circle on most of the days that I write. So that's the February spread. I also created one for March and we will do one for April once I'm clear on what my camp goal is actually gonna be based on how many words I estimate I've left in the manuscript. Though of course I won't know for sure. And then I did create this overarching spread as well. Now this spread takes me to the end of the book and it's broken down by chapters so I can fill in each time I write a chapter. So as you can see, I started with chapter 28 which is when I created this spread and it goes to chapter 45. Five. I don't know for sure that that's gonna be how many chapters are in this project, but that is my estimate based off of my outline as well as giving some cushion room, knowing that some chapters are probably gonna end up turning into two when I actually write them. I did save some room at the bottom as well in case the book ends up being longer than I'm anticipating, which is very possible. <laughs> but this is nice because in this single spread, I'm gonna go to the end of the book. And knowing that that's all encapsulated on here and all I need to do to fill in a circle is finish a chapter is super motivating. I also, of course, am tracking my word count in a virtual chart as I've done every month that gives me like a recommended pace in order to reach 10K words for the month. I do feel like some authors hyper fixate on word count as a goal and unnecessarily make it into something very serious. For me, I try not to think of it that way, but it is a very tangible, concrete way to document and take note as well as celebrate my progress, especially because when you're writing something as big as a novel, it can feel like you're kind of treading water in the middle of an ocean and the end is super distant, not in sight. And so having something super concrete and physical like word count to track and to acknowledge when you've made progress can be super helpful when you're taking on such a massive project. So I'm really excited about this whole trackers system. We'll be updating this throughout this vlog as I make more progress on the manuscript. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into episode four of the series, especially because the lawnmower is going again and I don't think I can deal with that. <laughs> Hello, good morning, happy Saturday. It has been honestly quite some time since I filmed the intro of this video. We've written a couple thousand words since we last talked and it is now a long weekend which means that I personally am going to be going into the writing cave. This morning we are going back to the tried and true method and I am taking myself on a little date to my favorite coffee shop to have a pastry and write some words. We'll talk a little bit more about where I'm at in the project after we do that writing session. Warmed up, please. Hi, we are back 
from the coffee shop. We ended up getting a good 900 words during that session. I got to fill in another circle, which I was so excited about. I logged my words, of course, in my little chart. And let's chat a little bit about how the project is going, where we're at, what's going on. So first of all, the first half of that writing session, I unfortunately fell into the revising pitfall. I was working on chapter 30 and chapter 30 gave me a surprisingly hard time even though the chapter itself was very simple and not a crazy amount was going on i actually think that's what made it hard is that it was way more about this bonding experience between two characters and the dialogue and there wasn't enough going on externally action wise to make it flow so it was a little bit of a painstaking chapter. That being said, I did get sucked into revising it a little bit. I know it's not smart to have done that. I couldn't help myself in this case, <laughs> but that did get me back into the writing mindset. And then I was able to crank out a decent amount of chapter 31, which is where I got a lot of that word count from. Now, something I wanted to talk about that I've been reflecting on recently is just how much more complicated the writing has become as I get further into the project. At the beginning, because I knew so little about the world, the characters, the story. It felt sort of more simplistic because I was obviously underwriting. I was writing the bare bones and I was just focusing on sort of the base elements of what's happening. Like what is the plot? What is happening on the most basic level? But now that I know more about the world, my characters, their relationships, how I want those arcs to develop, I know more about the world building, different elements. It feels suddenly like there's like 60 different layers that I have to manage every single time I write a scene. I think what it really Really boils down to is that I'm doing a lot more of the intense like weaving of layers in the drafting process for these later chapters versus in the first half of the book I'm very much going to have to wait to do that in revision because I just didn't have those answers when I was drafting so I know that ultimately I'm saving myself work in revision by kind of trying to work in all of these layers into the rough draft that being said it's been a lot more challenging and I feel like scenes are taking me more time to craft and they're a lot more intricate and stuff because I'm balancing all these different layers and it's not just like what's happening in this scene suddenly it's like okay but this character should be acting like this but they've changed since the beginning of the book so how do we show that but also how do we keep the essence of who they are and how do we show their dynamic with this other character and there's just like so much to think about with every single scene because who the character is and their relationship with the other characters needs to be woven into like everything that being said it's not like a problem but i do feel like it's making this part of drafting a little bit more complex and take a little bit longer i do want to keep writing because the scenes that I just wrote were kind of dull, kind of transitional scenes. They didn't really excite me. They just felt like things I kind of had to get through. But the scenes that we're about to go into are like the intense conflict, the beef and potatoes of the end of the book. Like things are happening quickly and I'm so excited to write all of these arguments and conflict and challenges that happen. I also have so many details figured out for what's going to happen in these scenes. So I'm hoping it'll flow a little bit easier than some of those more transitional scenes where I didn't know a lot of the details. So I'm really excited to write these upcoming scenes. So I think we're gonna keep chugging in the hopes that we can at least write a few more hundred words for the day, especially because I am behind on where I should be for the month so far. If I do wanna hit 10K for February, let's do a little bit more writing. <music> Okay, we're jumping in here because I wanted to say thank you. We just recently hit a thousand subscribers and honestly, I don't think I, it's really like settled in. I think I'm still a little bit mind blown. Watching this channel grow so quickly has been slightly insane, very encouraging, extremely exciting. I'm just so grateful that so many of you have resonated with my journey and are interested in seeing my process with this book and with writing in general. So thank you so much if you have subscribed and been one of those 1000 people. So excited to see where we go from here. And yeah, I'm just feeling really grateful and excited about the future of this channel right now. So thank you for being here. Back to the vlog. Okay, hi, it is later in the day. As you can see, I have changed into a cozy sweatshirt. I could only last so long in the cute clothes. Admittedly, this happens to me every time I actually wear a cute outfit by 
afternoon i'm like okay when can i change so i want to have a quick chat i have been on my reading game lately and i want to talk about how my reading habits have been tying into my writing lately so i'm about to start this book the serpent and the wings of night which i've heard great things about the back literally compares it to akatar so i'm really excited to read this she's thick she's i think a romanticy so really looking forward to this one i just finished the latest installment of the percy jackson series which i had so much fun reading i feel like since i've started Started writing again and i don't know if i've talked about this in past vlogs but i don't believe that i really have dived into it but since i've started writing again it's really changed the way that i approach slash feel while i'm reading books specifically i feel like i just look at books through a much more critical lens not in a bad way where i'm like criticizing the writing the whole time but more so just in the way where i'm like trying to learn so i'll notice sentences where maybe i don't like the wording or i specifically like how they did it and i'll try to take note of why or why not that little section of the book was working for me what vocabulary do i like am i noticing specific words that i personally like and might want to use little things like that even specific types of scenes i've started like referencing the books that i have and like to see how did they do it specifically with like romance or spice i feel like i need to look at how it's done in other books and this is something that i want to employ even more in the future specifically with like a more specific intention for example okay i need to figure out how to write romance really well let me like study the romance in different novels that i like and i feel like this is such a great tool because the proof is in the pudding sort of vibe you know you can blatantly see what is and isn't working in books that you enjoy i have noticed though that like when i'm reading a certain book sometimes i can feel its influence on my writing which i don't necessarily think is a bad thing as long as it's not like i'm fully adopting the tone of the book or anything crazy but like for example when i was reading the inheritance games i felt like i could feel that author's writing style and vocabulary creeping into the way that i was writing scenes or after i read percy jackson i felt myself kind of fighting against trying to put a more comedic tone in the narration of my book because that's very much the vibe that rick riordan does and i'm like this makes no sense for my book why am i feeling like i want to do this and it was totally because of what i had just read so curious if any of you relate to any of these experiences whether it's using books to help grow you as a writer teach you what you do and do not like in stories or if it's seeing how other things you've read have impacted your writing style 1000 percent the a court of thrones and roses series impacted my writing style going into this project and honestly i don't think that there's any issue with that because at the end of the day i think we're all sort of a product of our influences and that's somewhat inevitable and not necessarily a bad thing because we all sort of naturally put our own twist and style onto things and yeah so i don't think it's a bad thing to be influenced but i'm curious if any of you guys can relate to these experiences I've also found myself really looking at book covers and getting very specific and crazy about it specifically obviously fantasy book covers because i'm trying to get inspired i do really like this cover i think it's really cool i love the snake i love the rose i love these more like symbol focused covers with just a few elements there are certain things that i hate on this cover <laughs> for example the figures here really bother me i don't know why the dead leaves i could do without it's kind of interesting just taking stock of different elements that i like versus don't like i love the giant key the snake the flowers i don't want to spill anything on what i'm planning to do for my cover but i am thinking more and more about the cover as i get deeper into the project my friend the other day actually suggested using the cover as sort of a reward for how far i've gotten into the rough draft i'm so conflicted because on the one hand i can't wait to reserve my cover designer and even when i reserve her knowing that she books out several months in advance it's not like we'll start working on the cover immediately but i just want to make sure that i'm far enough in where i know solidly what i want on the cover and also the title because i'm still not 100 about the title for this book and obviously i need to know the title before i get the cover made so i'm still debating the timeline for that originally i was planning not to hire the cover artist till like 2025 but i'm like maybe i'll give it to myself as a gift when i finish the rough draft just to book her in advance especially because i do feel like i'm starting to understand what i want the cover to look like and by the time the draft is over i would hope i have a good idea of it i'll spill more details on the cover when we cross that bridge realistically i'm not going to share a lot of the more self-publishing side of this project until the book is coming 
coming out and I'm planning to do an entire long video documenting self-publishing my novel from start to finish which will be like a massive <laughs> chronicle of designing the cover hiring the editor etc so I'm really excited to create that video it's completely inspired by what Katie Wismer used to do for some of her books unfortunately I'm not going to be able to share much about the cover design process in the moment but after the fact you guys will obviously hear more about my process and I already have my artist picked out she's worked on a lot of covers that I love and I'm so excited to work with her it's looking like it's going to be like $550 for the cover if I also want to do a hardcover which I think I will want to do a special edition hardcover you guys are really getting the inside scoop on my publishing plans but yeah for this project I really want to create a special edition hardcover with bonus material so I'm thinking character art maybe a bonus scene maybe even like an annotated chapter I think I want to release that at the same time as I release the book in general as opposed to after the fact that way when people go to buy the book if they want to buy the book they have all the options already instead of having to then like repurchase the hardcover later if that's what they want you know I would love people to just be able to choose the way they want to read it right off the bat instead of releasing in other forms later at the moment that's looking like it'll be ebook paperback hardcover and kindle unlimited is the distribution that I have planned and all of that will be through Amazon though I'm also considering maybe putting the paperbacks on Barnes and Noble through like Barnes and Noble Press yeah but anyway I'm really excited to read this book definitely in my reading era and loving that it's inspiring me on my writing journey as well I don't know why but today all I want to do is write like genuinely I've like tried doing other little things like I tried working on my notion I thought about filming a main channel video but I don't know I'm just like in my story right now and that's like all that sounds appealing okay that's it for this update bye we interrupt this vlog for a brief little q a segment basically i've been taking questions in the comment section of these videos if you leave a question i will answer them in the next episode of the series so we have two questions for today so the first one is from ava if you were to fan cast your story with any actors or celebrities who would you choose and why this is a great question i gotta tell you though i know very few actors and celebrities like for someone who went to film school i could not name you more than like five actors okay maybe that's an exaggeration but the fact remains that i'm not the most well-versed in this so i want to pass this question along to you guys can you think of any actors who look like this or like this if so let me know i'd be curious curious to hear curious to know which authors and author tubers inspire you the most in your creative journey that question came from Catherine. obviously i have to take this opportunity to shout out a few of my favorite author tubers to name a few katie wismer is the blueprint in terms of what i want to do with my self-publishing career i love her videos kelly ty lindy Chung. Chris M. Fajardo, Sarah Labrat, Anna New. Those have been some of my favorites as of late. I love watching other AuthorTube content and honestly getting into watching AuthorTube is a huge reason why I started this channel and why I started writing again. So huge thanks to all those people for really inspiring this journey for me. And I strongly recommend checking out all of their channels. I'll have all of them linked down below. Great people to go to if you're looking for more writing vlogs to binge. They also have some really great craft advice videos that I really like find a lot of value in so if you have any questions for the next episode feel free to leave them down in the comments they can be about anything my writing process even my lifestyle how i fit in writing my story it can literally be anything good morning guys happy sunday so i wanted to check in because i actually just printed out my character pictures they're also pulled up on my computer, as you can see. I mentioned in my, was it my Sarah J Mass writing routine video? I mentioned in some video that something that helps me so frequently when I'm stuck is just looking at my character pictures because it helps me to visualize their interactions, figure out the types of things they would say, how they would move, etc. And having to constantly page back and forth between my manuscript and the character profiles just wasn't like ideal. So I came up with the idea of just printing out my six most central characters and whacking them up on this wall for me to just be able to look up at while I'm writing, if I'm writing in my office, which sometimes I'm not, but sometimes I am. Also, they're just stunning. I am actually literally starving, so I think I'm going to go get a bagel and maybe bring my computer to do some writing. I'm still feeling very motivated with this project right now. I'm really on a roll, and my goal for this weekend has become to break past my recommended pace where I should be at to hit 10k for the month. Since I've been behind it the entire month pretty much, I just want to be above the recommended pace for once it happens very rarely so it's very doable if we write like at least a thousand words today i think we'll be on track to do that so yeah let's hang this up
we're gonna do one final update to close out this vlog. It is now Monday, so the like third and final day of my long weekend. And we made some amazing progress in the project today. I'm like so overjoyed. So first of all, let's backtrack a little bit. So yesterday I talked to you guys when I hung my character pictures up on the wall and then I did go to a cafe for breakfast and did some writing. I got over a thousand words, was so happy with that session. And then today I got to write the big blowout argument of the later part of the book where all three characters basically get in a fight and things kind of hit that low, low moment where everyone's mad at each other and the spirits are really low and everything seems to be hitting the fan. And obviously it was a very exciting scene to write. It's one of the scenes that I've been most anticipating and it was so exciting. I knocked out the entire chapter in one sitting, wrote a good 1300 words, which I will say chapter didn't end up being as long as I was anticipating. Maybe it'll get chunkier in revision, <laughs> but it was, I guess on the shorter side. I'm curious how the pacing is going to feel in this part of the book because it's been a lot of shorter chapters at least by the standards of this project thus far like I've had a lot more chapters that were like a thousand words a little under a thousand words lately I feel like I'll really have to see it printed which I am planning to see the first draft printed in like a book format to know how the pacing feels, how the chapter lines feels, because I feel like generally it's nice to have a mix of shorter, longer chapters. Anyway, all that being said, it was super exciting to finally write that big moment in the book. And I really feel like we are getting far into this project at this point. Like we are approaching the end. Things are really happening. So many reveals are going on. We're getting some twists, some revelations, and there's about to be more big moments. Pretty much from here on out, it's all big moments. Like there's no, there's no real rest for the rest of the book. Like we're in the part where it's just like things are hitting the fan. We did hit 7k for the month, which I'm super happy with. We broke past the suggested pace. So I'm on track to hit 10,000 words by the end of February. Very exciting. And we finished chapter 33, which means this entire first row of this spread is knocked out now. And hypothetically, we only have like two more rows of chapters, assuming my outline holds true, which is slightly insane because that means that we're a third of the way through this last section of the book. If you guys saw my pants or tries plotting vlog, I did this exercise. It's still up <laughs> with my post-it notes. And we are now like almost at the end of the middle section. I don't know how well you can even see it, but there's the pink, there's the light, like green, and then there's the blue. We're about to enter the dark blue. So like, we're really getting there. We're really getting towards the end now. I just like can't believe it. And I'm so excited. Feeling like we are definitely on track to finish the book by April, which is my goal to finish it with Camp Nano April. I really like the scene that I wrote today. I feel like I was doing a pretty decent job of not self-editing too much. There was definitely some wording or descriptions that I got caught up on, but for the most part, I do feel like it was flowing pretty naturally. I wasn't super stuck during this scene. Definitely helped that I already had little pieces of dialogue and things that I knew I wanted to happen in this big argument since I had given it quite some thought. Also, I'm exposing myself with the fact that I only turned on the one sconce <laughs> for this clip. I didn't realize the other ones in the back. Ignore that ignore that. But yeah, I'm happy with how the scene went. I love that they've reached this kind of breaking point where the characters are just like not speaking to each other and things are really tense, especially because I feel like I needed that final pull apart moment, especially for the main romance where they're about to kind of get together and then everything falls apart again. And then at the very end, we can kind of rectify it. So that's where we're at. So that is it for this episode of the Rough Draft Vlogs. If you're new here and you've never seen my videos before, I do have an entire playlist that you can binge with all the past episodes of the Rough Draft Vlog series, as well as an entire playlist with my NaNoWriMo series, which was the beginning of me working on this project. If you like my content and want to support me, I do have a Ko-fi page where you can essentially buy me a virtual coffee. Thank you guys again for a thousand subscribers. If you have any questions for the next episode, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next week with another one. Bye.